health scare. You want health scare. So this is part two of why you should look after yourself. Listen to your body. Don't have this happen. Can you hear the ambulance in the background? How appropriate. So if you haven't seen the other part, go back and watch the other video. I tell about having a TIA, which is a mini stroke, or a stroke that doesn't stick, uh, and working through it, which was a stupid thing to do. Uh, I didn't see anybody about it. I should have done, and it eventually led to much worse things. So 2018, age 46. I'm happy, healthy. I've got a brand new truck that I own. Everything's going great. I left the truck to get serviced down in Victoria, and I flew home for the weekend to fly back down to start again in a couple of days' time. So on arrival, I've uh, driven from Melbourne Airport out to where the mechanic is. So I've grabbed the truck, I've backed around, hooked up to my trailers. As I'm jumping back in the cab, I think, geez, shoulders sore. What have I done? I must have pulled a muscle or something when I was winding the legs up. Yeah, anyway, sat for a second, thought, oh, I don't feel real good, but this shoulder, I don't know what I've done here. So anyway, I, uh, I carried on. I, I started out in the highway and I drove about half an hour away from town. Perfectly good hospital in town. Half hour away from it. I was driving up to a farm. And as I got going, I was thinking, this shoulder's getting worse. And then as I progressed, the, the pain started elevating up into my neck, down into my chest and down my arm. So eventually my whole arm right down to the wrist was absolutely singing. I, I had my hand held under my pec muscle there, trying to you know, mitigate the pain, trying to cause pain to, to mitigate the pain. And my, so my neck, my arm, right through the chest was absolutely killing me. I mean, absolute agony. Uh, and this is going to sound really stupid. Do not do this. I was in so much pain. I was in so much pain that I set the cruise control so I could stamp my feet on the ground to cause pain to try and take away from the pain I was experiencing. Now, stupid me did not realise it was a heart attack. I never even thought about a heart attack. I'm 46 years old. I'm healthy. I'm fit. I'm built like I'm built. I don't drink. I don't smoke. There's nothing about me that says you're a heart attack candidate. Well, anyway, I got to where I was going, still having the heart attack, driving away from town. I managed to reverse the double into where it had to go while still having this heart attack on a farm. And when I finished, I thought all I can do is crawl into bed, which I'm so glad I didn't do, because it would have been the end of me. When I finished backing the truck in, I basically passed out over the steering wheel. Now, luckily, that truck was a Scania, so it had the horn button on the steering wheel. So when I passed out on the steering wheel, the horn went off. And in a Scania, the horn on the steering wheel also activates the, horn, the air horns on the roof. Now... Thankfully, there was someone in hearing distance. This wonderful lady came out to see what the noise was all about, saw me and said, you don't look right. And I vaguely remember looking down and saying, I'm not. I got myself down out of the truck somehow and she put me in her car and she drove me half hour into the hospital and basically saved my life. So they managed to stabilize me in hospital. This is in Warrnambool in Southwest Victoria. They realised they didn't have the facilities needed at that hospital. So they decided to fly me to Geelong. So this is pretty serious. Uh, in the meantime, a road ambulance became available and they decided that it was quicker to put me in the available road ambulance and express me through to Geelong rather than having to get the air side of things operating and so on and so on. So on arrival at Epworth, I was literally tipped off the ambulance stretcher onto a theatre stretcher and rushed into theatre. Now that turned out to be what's called a SCAD which is a spontaneous coronary artery dissection heart attack. Now there's a couple of ways they work but what they believe happened in my case was they believe that a blood vessel in the wall of an artery burst causing a restriction in the artery and at the same time a clot came along and got wedged and starved the heart from blood. Now that's basically how the heart attack happened. I was very lucky. So that led to six weeks off work. Can't drive a heavy vehicle for six weeks. Anyway, as soon as I could, I'm back at it again. A year later, 
I had my first week off that I'd had in forever. And we went out to Ayers Rock. This was 2019. It was just before the Ayers Rock climb finished. And I wanted to get out there and do that before it stopped. Now, the day after I climbed the rock, we flew back. A flight from Ayers Rock or Uluru Airport to Sydney, and then a flight from Sydney to Brisbane. So we arrived back quite late that evening. We walked in the door and we sat down at the dining room table, nine o'clock at night. And this is where timing is absolutely vital. So my fiance and I are sitting around the corner of the dining room table, comparing the photographs we've taken on our trip. I've suddenly felt this wave of warmth go through my head. And I went to say, that felt funny. And it came out as and my fiance looked at me and said, are you okay? And I said, now again, sounded coherent to me, not so much to her. I pushed myself back with my right foot. I had my phone in my left hand. And as I came clear of the table, my hand just dropped like a stone. Phone fell on the floor and I realized that not only can I not speak, I've got no movement in my left side of the body. So I'm sitting there trying to trying to do this and I just can't make my hand move. Well, actually it's hanging down, but you know. Over a couple of minutes, I started to get a little bit of a pins and needles sort of sensation in my fingers and I started to get a little bit of movement. And then probably about 10 minutes, I actually felt that I could probably stand up. Now, my fiance, thankfully, had rung triple zero. So she's already rung the ambulance because she's scared witless of what's happening. And I'm thinking, no, I'm coming out of this, it's okay. And I've, I've, I've managed to half stand up and I've just thought, oh, going again. Fell back in the chair. Now that one, what I'd experienced was a TIA on the right side of the brain. So left side of the body, completely paralyzed momentarily. But the second one, which followed almost instantly, was a left side of the brain full stroke, which paralyzed my right side of the body. Now, because my fiance had rung the ambulance when she first saw the TIA starting, the ambulance literally was knocking at the door as I had my stroke. Now that is the best scenario, the best luck you could possibly ever, ever have, because that again, possibly saved my life, but certainly saved any long-term damage. I have no deficit whatsoever. I'm extremely lucky. So I'm rushed to Redlands Hospital, which is only five or six minutes from where we live. And again, straight into the care of doctors. Another bit of luck, the doctor who was on duty that night in the ER, their pet specialty is strokes. So I had the best possible treatment immediately. And that is what made the difference. So I am incredibly, incredibly lucky. Now, that resulted in some tests being done and it was discovered the cause of the stroke and as it turned out, the cause of the heart attack as well was the fact that I had clots and things running around inside my body. The reason for that was they identified a rather large hole in my heart. Now that in itself is not unusual I reckon up to one in four people have a hole in the heart. It just depends on how big the hole is and how much it affects you, where exactly it is, how it works. Everybody's heart technically has a hole in it when they're born. When they're born, first breath, there's a little flap that shuts. And for some people, it just doesn't shut properly. I had quite a substantial hole. The way they discover this is they do a test where they inject air bubbles into your bloodstream. And for anyone thinking that an air bubble in your bloodstream will kill you, absolutely not true. You know the story that the injection of air into your blood kill you? Doesn't happen. You've got to put a lot of air into your blood to make that happen. They actually inject an aerated solution into the blood and they watch it on an echocardiogram and I actually watch the screen. So as the bubbles entered the heart, which in layman's terms, the dirty side of the heart, instead of those bubbles then exiting the heart to go through the filtration process through all the organs, they actually cross over the heart into the clean side and within two or three beats of the heart it had equalized now that is not supposed to happen there's not supposed to be any leakage whatsoever so that resulted in a procedure called a pfo closure where they put a plug in your heart to fill the hole 
Now, ever since that's been done, I am genuinely healthy again. Now, I had three months unable to drive a heavy vehicle after that stroke. I had to pass a whole load of tests. I had to be signed off by a cardiologist. I had to be signed off by a neurologist. And I had to prove that there was no deficit from my stroke and there was no reason why I couldn't drive a heavy vehicle safely. Now, as it turns out, I'm now healthier than I've ever been. I lived all those years, 47 years, with that time bomb ticking away, never knowing. And that's what caused the TIA that I had in the last video that I talked about. And I had several of those at younger times too, not realizing what they were at the time. So that's my story. So again, listen to your body. If you've got something that's not quite right, it's not gonna fix itself, go see a doctor, get it sorted out. And hopefully you can get your problem sorted out before it becomes a major issue because you don't want a heart attack and you don't want a stroke if you can avoid it. I've had both. I've been extremely lucky to survive both. You might not be so lucky.